So, we are now on the last part of our uh, lecture on business taxation for entrepreneurs, and these are the tax updates. But before I proceed with the tax updates, I would like to uh, make some uh, discussion about uh, this tax compliance and verification drive, which is otherwise known as the tax mapping. Because um, I have heard of a lot of, uh, of reports uh, from, from clients and even uh, uh, with others na kaliwat kanan ngayon yung mga tax mapping activities na ginagawa ng BIR. So, uh, just to give you a, a brief background of what tax mapping is all about, okay, I made this presentation. Okay, so what is actually a tax mapping? So, a tax mapping is a procedure conducted by the BIR to identify the registration compliance of a certain entity or business. In simpler terms, uh, it is an activity taken by the BIR to know if an ex establishment is registered or not. If then registered, are they aware of their obligations as taxpayers and how are, are they transacting their daily transactions or operations? So ito, hindi naman ito actually audit. This is just a verification drive. Tinitinglan lang ng BIR dito kung registered ka ba o hindi. At kung registered ka, meron ka bang libro, meron ka bang resibo, etc., etc., so, kung anong findings na makita nila sa'yo, yun yung ina-assess nila. Siyempre, for an assessment of penalties again. Okay? So, who are the subject of this TCVD? Okay. Actually, all establishments or entities doing business, whether single, single proprietorship, partnership, or corporations, are the subject of this tax mapping. So, is there a way to know if tax mapping will be conducted in a particular area? Okay? The answer is no. Okay? Tax mapping activities are usually surprised or unannounced. Okay? Every mapping uh, is served with a mission order that is released on or before the day of the supposed tax mapping operation. This mission order contains the period or date and the area of coverage. So, pag kami nag-tax map sa inyo, it's important that they have the mission order para makita nyo expired na ba siya or within the scope pa rin siya na naandun sa mission order. Kapag ka yung date nun, eh ano na, ibig sabihin, hindi na sila, wala na silang authority to tax map you. Pero kung naandun pa rin, uh, wala tayong choice. Hindi ito announce for, for the purpose na, na gusto nga nila mahuli eh. Kasi pag announce, eh di lahat ng entities, it's either magsasara sila para hindi sila ma-investigahan or ma-tax map or at the same time, uh, gagawin na lang nila yung ano, ipopost uh, nila kung anong dapat nilang gawin. So, ang pinakamaganda to combat this is to be prepared. Okay, so ano ba yung mga dapat natin gawin? So, what do every business establishment need to do in case of tax mapping? Okay, you have to remember that this following original, uh, that the following original copies of this document should be in the place of business, okay? So, ito yung mga registration requirements ng BIR. Ano-ano yon? Annual registration fee, ito yung 0605. Dapat yung original niya nakapost dyan sa dingding ng inyong opisina, okay? Yung certificate of registration or yung BIR 2303, dapat nakapost naka din sa office na uh, yung original. Yung orange na signage, yung nakalagay ay ask for BIR receipt. Okay, that previously it's noticed to the public. Ngayon, ask for BIR receipt. Dapat nakapost din yan sa dingding. Okay, if you are actually utilizing a uh, uh, point of sale or cash register machines, yung permit niyan at saka sticker should still be there. Okay, and also kung you are uh, authorized to, uh, to use EC pay terminal kung ano, dapat na andyan siya. In short, dapat nakapost siya lahat. Pag walang nakapost, may penalty. Magkano? 1,000 kada isang violation. So, wala kang nakapost na ask for BIR receipt, 1,000. Okay? Pag wala kang COR, hindi nakapost, uh, 1,000. Pag nakapost, pero pay, ano lang siya, Xerox, 1,000. Tari, kailangan original. Okay? So, huwag nyo nang panghinayangan. Ang itago nyo na lang photocopies, pero yung original should be posted. Okay? So, ano pa? Have the following 
documents ready for inspection. Unang-una itong mga invoicing requirements na to. Duly registered invoices and receipts compliant to the new RR 18 2012. Kanina I mentioned that upon registration, you have to secure an authority to print invoices and officer receipts. Ngayon, last year, I think around October, nag-release ang BIR ng bagong regulations requiring printers to be accredited with BIR before they can actually be engaged in printing or an application for authority to print. So it was actually published, I think, December 2012. Tapos na-implement siya early January 2013. Okay? So ano yung coverage nung 18-2012? Seriously, ang sinasabi lang sa regulations na yun, all taxpayers, okay, kahit luma o bago, should be Uh, should secure a new authority to print. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng resibo mo, papalitan mo, na compliant dito sa regulation na to. Kapag hindi, syempre, mapepenalize ka. Ang mga resibo noong araw, kapag ka pina, pinapagawa, walang expiration date. With these new regulations, may expiration date na rin ang mga resibo. Ilan yon? Five years. Okay? Five years na lang. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi na ubus ang resibo mo within the span of five years, you have no choice but to apply for a new authority to print 60 days before mag-expire yung iyong resibo. Pag hindi, penalty again. Okay? So, hindi na uso yung marami kang magpapagawa kasi forever mo nang gagamitin. Ngayon, ang tatanungin mo, bakit, uh, bakit meron na expiration parang prepaid card? ba? Diba? Um, sig ano, it's actually a, 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 a parang uh, an action taken by the BIR kasi marami din kasi sa mga Pilipino. Alam niyo yung creative. There was some cases kasi na nung chinek kasi ng BIR, there was one receipt na nung chinek ng BIR, yung resibo. Meron pa lang mga grupo sa, I think it's sa custom din eh, na an, ang, ang kanilang business is nagbebenta ng mga resibo. Okay. So, minsan, nung nag-investigate sila, they saw this receipt na nung nakita nila sa database ng BIR, it was actually a receipt that was printed 1970s pa. Okay? Na hanggang ngayon, nung tinecheck nila, yung company pala na yun is no longer existing. Okay? So, since the, eh, nagkataon nung nakita nila yon, marami silang na-assess na penalties and everything. So, parang maraming anomalies. So, ito yung isa sa mga ginawa nilang hakbang kung bakit nagkaroon na expiration date. Nakapag five years na, hindi na siya pwedeng gamitin. So, yun yung ano nun. Yun yung uh, pinaka-historia kung bakit, bakit merong ganyong regulation. So, if you are using a post of sale or a cash register machine, ensure that the tape receipts issued by the machine contains all the necessary information required under the invoicing requirements of the NIRC or the National Internal Revenue Code. Ano-ano yun? Dapat na andan yung pangalan ng, yung TIN. Papangalan muna ng establishment, the TIN, the address, uh, pati yung, uh, uh, yung, yung VAT, naka-separate and everything. So, dapat lang uh, compliant din siya with, with BIR invoicing requirements. Okay. So, ano pa yung dapat? Ito, yung bookkeeping requirements. Yung book of accounts should be maintained. Okay? Sabihin, tinitingnan nila, may libro ba yung establishment? Pag walang libro, ay malamang hindi siya nagre-record ng transactions at malamang hindi totoo yung dinideclare niya sa returns niya. That's the, that's the purpose of the book of accounts. Makita nila na yung nakarecord sa libro mo is the one that you are actually reporting. So, ano pa yon Yung book of accounts should be kept in the place of business. Uh, marami po kasi na taxpayers na didepende sa accountant sa bookkeeping, pag na-tax map, sasabihin, wala sa kanilang yung book of accounts at naandun sa accountant para lagyan ng entrada, ng mga entries. Actually, it's not an excuse. Once na na-tax map kayo, tapos uh, hindi nyo na-present yung book of accounts, at the time na na-inspect yung ano mo, uh, libro mo, that's already uh, uh, subject to penalty again. Okay. Ngayon, for example, yung book of accounts mo naman naandun sa place of business, pero pagbukas, wala na malaman. Or, 
hindi siya updated. So, ibig sabihin, penalty na naman yun. Okay, so there are three things that you have to remember kapag kami sa bookkeeping requirements. First, you have to have a book of accounts. Second, it has to be in the place of business at the time of tax mapping. And the third, it should be updated. Kasi isa man dyan, may violation, may penalty pa rin yan. Okay? So, ang penalty actually depends on the RDO who uh, administers the district. May nang ibang RDO na 1,000, okay na. But, kung tutuusin, pag tinignan mo yung, yung may, may reference ako binigay kanina, yung RMO, uh, I think 27, 2007, uh, or 2009, uh, yung revised compromise penalty requires na it should be based on your annual gross sales or gross receipts. So, meron yung table na mas mataas pa doon sa 1,000. Pero in some RDOs, they are actually implementing doon sa mga mababait na <laughs> 1,000 lang. But uh, minsan, meron talaga mahigpit. So, kapag ka ganun, medyo mahirap. I think the uh, pinaka mababa na doon, ang bababayaran mo is 10,000. Or ano, depende sa ano, sa sa, sa gross sales. Okay? So, let us go now for the uh, latest tax issuances by the Bureau of Internal Revenue for 2013. Okay. So, meron, unang-una, ito yung RR, or Revenue Regulation 1-2003. This further expands the coverage of taxpayers required to file tax returns and pay taxes through the EFPS or the Electronic Filing and Payment System to include the national government agencies mandatorily required to use electronic tax remittance advice. So, dati kasi, ang paggamit ng EFPS is uh, covers lang, number one, yung mga large taxpayers group. Okay? Sino-sino yung mga yon? Actually, paano mo malalaman na ikaw ay large taxpayer or nasa top 20,000 corporation? Kapag ikaw ay nakareceive ng love letter from the BIR. Okay? Usually, ang BIR, nag-i-issue yan ng uh, tawag kay love letter na sinasabi nila na, oy, dahil mahal na mahal kita, kasama ka na sa top 20,000 taxpayers or large taxpayer group. Pagka ganun, dapat, ang filing mo hindi na manual. Dapat electronic na o, through EFPS. Sino pa yun? Um, yung mga, may mga capitalization or paid up capital more than 10 million required or mandated ka na rin to have an EFPS uh, Uh, filer, okay? Dapat EFPS filer ka na. Um, yung uh, mga PESA, uh, PESA registered companies, yung mga nasa economic zone authorities, ayan, dapat EFPS din sila. Okay? At ito nga yung panglima, yung mga government agencies. So, even sina uh, City Hall, mga pag dapat naka EFPS na rin sila. So, covered na sila doon sa Uh, EFPS filers. Okay? So, RR 11-2013. Ang mga kinuha ko lang yung medyo, yung medyo relevant na magiging interested kayo, no? Okay? Prescribe the filing submission of a hard copy of the Certificate of Compensation Payment Tax Withheld or BIR Form 2316 covering employees who are qualified for substituted filing. Um, okay. Um, it was in 2000 I think, three, na inalaw ng BIR na magkaroon din nitong substituted filing. Ano ba itong substituted filing? Uh, kapag ikaw employee, okay, ibig sabihin ikaw or an, an individual taxpayer who uh, is solely parang dependent on your income on compensation. So, ibig sabihin, empleyado ka lang talaga. Normally, nung araw, ang, ang uh, binibigay sa iyo is yung W-2 kung tawagin. So, naandun yung mga uh, andun yung income mo, magkano't we need help sa'yo, ganyan. So, binago to 2316. Kanina binanggit ko yung BIR forms. Pag ang code 23, certificate siya, di ba? So, 2316 is your certificate for withholding tax on compensation. So, itong uh, nung 2003, nagkaroon ng regulation na sinabi na kung ikaw, may mga certain criteria na kapag ikaw individual taxpayer ka at ang income mo is purely dependent on compensation alone. Minsan, pag, pag nag-submit ka kasi ng, uh, ng uh, 
income tax return mo on April 15, kung ano din naman ang naandun sa 2316 mo, tinatransfer mo lang din dun sa 17 o 100 mo. Tama ba? So, parang redundant. So, kinerate nila itong substituted filing. Ano to? Yung parang sinasabi nila na kung ang criteria mo ay ikaw ay purely dependent on income, uh, on a compensation income, at ikaw ay uh, wala ng ibang employers, at yung asawa mo, ganun din, okay, pwede ka na sa substituted filing. Ibig sabihin, yung 2316 mo, hindi mo na kailangang i-refile under 1700. Okay, basta substituted filing. Not unless meron kang business. Okay? Kung may business ka, hindi ka qualified. Ngayon, ano yung uh, basis mo kung natama yung 2316? Yung alpha list, kung tawagin, yung 1601 CF, na isinasabit ng employer, doon mo makikita kung talagang uh, yun yung ifinile ng employer mo. Ngayon, with this regulation, kung dati uh, pwede yung hindi pinapareceive ng, sa BIR, ngayon, effective 2013, those 2316 should have to be stamp received also by the BIR. So, yung mga employers dyan or yung mga entrepreneurs who are actually issuing 2316 to their employees na imposibleng wala dahil nagpapasweldo tayo, you should have to uh, have that 2316 received on or before January 31. Baka kasi hindi alam dahil dati allowed siya na walang stamp. Pero ngayon po, by next year, you have to have it received or stamped by BIR. Okay? So, meron na rin siyang receiving. RR 12, 2013, amends section 2.58.5 of RR 2-98 relative to the requirements for deductibility of certain income payments. Um, ito naman, sa madaling salita, If we are a withholding agent na, pan, na sinabi natin na kailangan nagwi-withheld tayo ng tax from our suppliers or from our uh, service providers, kapag ka nakalimutan mo po na mag-withheld sa isang transaksyon na dapat ay nag-withheld ka, in case of an audit by the BIR, that transaction or expense will be disallowed. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo siya pwedeng i-claim as deductible expense. So, dapat maging very careful kayo to know if the expenses or the transactions that you are entering into ay dapat ba ma-withheld o hindi. Kasi pag hindi, kawawa ka din. I-disallow nila. Okay? Paano kung halimbawa, 1 million, nakalimutan mo mag-withheld ng 1%, for example, or 2%. 1 million na expenses mo tatanggalin sa 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 ano mo income tax maaassess ka ng 30% for 1 million and how much is that 300,000 you'll be paying 300,000 for that transaction alone kaya be very careful okay in your application of uh, withholding taxes and i think that is progressive it will uh, commence uh, for this uh, year then okay this year's audit Okay, yung 14-2003 na revenue regulation amends pertinent uh, provisions of RR 2-98 uh, for medical practitioners. Okay, I think naibalita ito sa, sa TV at sa radyo na uh, sa mga medical, hindi, hindi na po pwedeng maningil ang mga doktor sa mga inpatient, okay? Sa mga inpatient na na patients patients nila na direct nilang makukolekta yung yung kanilang fees okay dapat kasi ang gagawa na noon is yung hospital or yung HMO kung saan naka affiliate yung pasyente kapag po uh, ano sa ganung paraan kasi yung mga doctors actually napipilitan silang i-report yung income nila kasi kailangan mag-withheld ng mga organizations na yon or entities na yon doon sa mga income payments sa kanila ng mga patients. Okay. So, RR 17-2013 prescribes the guidelines on the preservation of books of account and other accounting records. Previously po, uh, per, uh, per the provision, under the provisions of the National Internal Revenue Code, 
Ang preservation ng book of accounts and accounting records are three years. Okay? Kailan nagsisimula yung three years? Uh, it will commence uh, after your income tax return has been filed. So halimbawa, 2013. Okay, yung 2013 ko, ang income tax ko dyan, dapat mag-file ko April 15, 2014. Okay, so yung preservation ng books, or yung prescription nun, dapat 2015, 16, 17. So, ibig sabihin, by April 16 ng 2017, I can already uh, shred all the, the, the records of 2013 transactions. Okay. Itong bagong regulation na to, in-extend niya po yung 3 years. Okay. From 3 years to 10 years. Okay? So ngayon, 10 years na yung prescription ng ng uh, preservation ng ng books. Uh, why is so? Kasi um in 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 a fraudulent transaction, okay? Although sabihin mo na ang uh, BIR kasi has the right to audit you 3 years after the end of the taxable year, okay? Kumbaga sa preservation ng books at saka audit ng BIR pareho lang 'yan. Kaya lang kapag ka yung may nakita ang BIR na medyo fraudulent yung transaction mo, yung prescription nyo nawawala. It extends up to 10 years. Wala ng prescription, pwede ka nilang i-audit hanggang sa for, for 10 years. Okay. Siguro maraming mga cases, all the fraudulent yung transactions, ang nagiging defense ng taxpayers, yung mga records is no longer available. Why? It because, it because yung mga records nila, wala na. Okay. Uh, na-destroy na, na, na nila or na-dispose na nila. So, it, it is the reason kung bakit nila in-extend ng 10 years. But I think that's too long. That's too long. In fact, isa to sa mga pinoproblema naming mga accounting firms kasi parang we have to have a lar larger or a bigger warehouse for archiving documents kasi doon sa regulations even the, sir, the, the accountants are mandated to have their records in our offices. Okay? So, hindi, yun, lalo na yung nag-audit. So, hindi pwedeng wala rin kami. So, bukod sa taxpayers, dapat meron din yung accountants. And you'll be liable for that. Ang bait talaga nila. Okay? So, Revenue Memorandum Order 4-2013 prescribed the policies and guidelines in the audit of tax returns by revenue district offices. So, ito naman, yung mga guidelines lang, mga priority for audit. Actually, dito sa RMO na to, diniscuss lang dyan kung sino yung mga priority to, to audit. So, in general, lahat will be subjected to audit. Pero ang priorities are number one, doctors, engineers, architects, in short, mga professionals. Okay? Favorite ngayon na BIR ang professionals. Why? Kasi, They made a study and they showed na in Makati alone, uh, mas mataas pa daw po ang binabaya ng isang public school teacher sa mga ifinapar lang mga uh, professionals. Okay, kaya yung sinasabi nila na mahiya naman kayo. So parang dapat ayusin din yung pagpapaya. So medyo mainit ang mata talaga pagdating sa mga professional at this point in, in time. Okay? Huwag kayo mag kasama kami doon. Okay? So, sa RMO 28-2013, prescribes the policies or guidelines and procedures in the implementation of the Mobile Revenue Collection Officer, uh, Officers System. So, kung alam niyo yung pagka nagbayad kayo sa BIR, sa mga collecting agents, meron silang resibo. Okay? Uh, sa ngayon, ito na yung pinapaan nila. Ito yung mob, uh, Mobile Revenue Collection. Parang ano na rin siya, ah... Uh, computer-generated receipt, hindi na yung manual. Although, I'm asking my husband, kasi my husband is actually an examiner of the BIR uh, from Taguig. Wala pa daw siya nakikita nito. But for purposes of uh, the tax update, meron, sinasabi ng BIR, meron na silang ganitong system. Hindi ko lang alam yung implementation nito or sino yung pilot district na nagsimula niyan. But it's actually happening. Okay. So, RMO 12-2013 prescribes the workaround guidelines and procedures in the processing of ATPs or Authority to Print Official Receipts, 
sales invoice and other commercial invoices in the interim period until online ATP system is fully developed. Remember, when they implemented this new procedures for EATP, uh, yung, yung uh, online facility ng BIR for electronic filing of this ATP is hindi rin ready. Okay? Supposedly, dapat online na yung application ng ATP. Pero since ang BIR mismo, mismo hindi rin siya ready, nagkaroon sila ng mga workaround procedures. Kaya kung napansin nyo, doon sa mga likod ng mga bagong resibo ngayon, nakaprint doon yung ATP. Okay? Dapat meron yung parang nakascan or, or uh, uh, yung po, parang nakascan copy ng ATP na andun yung sa likod kung ano, mapapansin nyo yun sa mga booklets. Nirequire na nila yon So ito yung mga work around procedures na ginawa nila kasi hindi pa available yung EATP system. Okay? So RMO 20-2013 prescribes the policies and guidelines in the issuance of tax exemption rulings to qualified non-stock, non-profit corporations and associations under Section 30 of the NIRC of 1997 as amended. Actually, itong Section 30 uh, ng, of the NIRC, andyan lahat ng listahan ng mga non-stock, non-profit na mga exempt, okay? Exempt na, na corporations and entities okay, from taxation. However, sabi ko nga kanina, it's not an absolute right. You have to seek exemption pa rin from the BIR. Before, kapag nakakuha ka ng ruling of exemption, that's already for lifetime purposes. But with this new regulation, sinasabi lang nila na for new applicants and for existing non-stock non-profit, you have to seek a ruling, okay? And if you are uh, and if you have been issued a ruling already, you have to apply for revalidation. Okay? So, may mga requirements na kailangan silang ano, i -re revalidate nila kung dapat ka pa ba talagang bigyan ng exemption. And that exemption ruling is also ex expirable until 3 years. Okay? After 3 years, you have to file again for another exemption ruling or certificate. Okay? So, RMO 28-2013 amend certain provisions of RMO 20-2013 prescribing the policies and guidelines of the issuance of this tax exemption. So, kanina yung uh, sinabi na kailangan ng revalidation. Ito naman yung guidelines lang. Okay? So, kung ano yung dapat isubmit. I think they were required to submit um, the audited financial statement for the last three or two years. Okay? Para makita nila talaga kung kumikita o hindi o nag-ooperate ka ba talaga in, uh, in uh, compliance with your application for exemption. Okay, so sa RMC Avenue Memorandum Circular 2-2013, clarify certain provisions of RR 12-2012 on the deductibili deductibility of depreciation expenses at it relates to purchase of vehicles and other expenses related thereto and the input taxes allowed therefore. Last year po kasi nagkaroon ng uh, regulations about putting a cap or limit doon sa mga purchase ng vehicles. Okay, yung mga motor vehicles ng mga companies, especially doon sa mga ibinibigay na na ambawa, yung mga mga officers ng company, binili ng kotse ng kumpanya, okay? Ang cap na binigay nila is up to 2.4 million only. So, ibig sabihin, if you purchase a motor vehicle worth 3 million, the 600,000 excess is no longer allowable, ano, uh, allowed to be deducted as your part of expenses as far as income tax uh, co uh, computation is concerned. Okay? So, kahit binili mo siyang 3 million, yung 2.4 lang yung allowed. And it also uh, goes with your depreciation. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yung depreciation lang doon sa 2.4 million yung allowable, did, uh, deductible expenses. Doon sa 600, hindi na. And it goes also with your income, input tax. So, yung input tax, hindi mo pwede i-claim yung buong input tax for the 3 million. You can only uh, uh, claim for the input tax of the input tax for the, of the input tax from your 2.4 million cap. Okay, so may limitations din siya. Okay. So RMC 6-2013 clarifies taxpayers' concern on the audit program 
and their responsibility in engaging tax agents and practitioners. So, in January, ano to, issue January, ito ay parang reminder lang na ang, uh, when, when you engage uh, someone from the, uh, to, uh, with the, to transact for you uh, uh, with the VIR, dapat ang kinukuha nyo is yung accredited din na VIR tax agent. Kasi meron din pong accreditations ang mga tax pra practitioners. Hindi lahat ng accountants or ano ay accredited. Okay? So meron din siyang provisions na ganyan. So, RMC 44-2013 extends the validity of an issued, of a news and issued principal and supplementary receipts invoices printed prior to January 18, 2013. In short, uh, before, uh, and deadline for, for the applications for new receipts uh, and invoices are June 30. Dito sa revenue na to, in-extend niya, in niya to August 30. Okay, parang extension lang ito. Okay. Ito naman, yung RMC 52-2013 clarifies the validity of a news, an issued principal and supplementary receipts invoices printed prior to January 18, 2013 and other matters. In fact, yung, yung una, yung 44-2013 was issued June, June 11. So, ito, in-extend niya from uh, June 30 to August 31. Nung malapit na yung August 31, nakita nila marami pa rin ang uh, buhos kasi ang uh, requirements sa pagpapagawa ng ATPs, ng mga, ng mga official receipts. In fact, mas marami ang demand kesa sa supplier. It was actually the reason why sobra pong mahal ng mga pagpapag pag nagpagawa ka ng resibo during those days. In fact, we were able to encounter uh, 250 per booklet. Ang isang booklet is 250. Dati, nabibili mo lang siya ng 50. Ngayon, 250. Maswerte ka na pag nakakuha ka ng 150 per booklet. In fact, ang pinakamataas na nag-offer sa akin, 500 per booklet. Sobra naman. Sabi ko, sobra naman. Huwag namang ganyan. Masyado ng ano. Pero parang wala, wala ka magawa eh. At that time, kasi you need them eh. Kumbaga, it's, it's, ano, that's still, ano yan, yung uh, supply of, uh, lo, ano, uh, supply and demand, uh, yung law, law of supply and demand. Na kapag mataas ang, ang demand at mal, maba, uh, ma, konti yung supplier, yung prices will go up. Ganun talaga ang nangyari, literally, doon sa mga, nung mga periods na to, nung pinapa-implement. So, dito naman, sa 52, nung in-extend siya nung August 31, kasi hindi pa rin kakayanin, what they did is they make a clarification na lahat ng ATPs or mga resibo nyo na na-print prior to January 2011. Okay? Ibig sabihin, prior, hindi na pwedeng gamitin until August 31. Pero, kung yung ATP mo na-print before, ay sorry, after na nung January 2011 na yon, pwede mo siyang gamitin until October 31 this year provided that the following conditions are available. Unang-una, dapat nakapag-apply ka na ng ATP bago mag-August 30. Pangalawa, dapat mayroong kang italagyan mo ng stamp yung uh, official receipt mo or sales invoice na valid until October 31, 2013 only. Okay. Pero kung meron doon na hindi ka na-apply, uh, penalty pa rin yung katapat niyan. Okay. I just want to share this, na just to give you a, 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 a parang, uh, an idea kung bakit ba talaga tayo nagbabayad ng taxes in, in a different perspective. Uh, I just wanted to share that uh, pay, paying or uh, payment of taxes are actually biblical talaga naman in nature. And uh, I was able to pass with this uh, verse from Romans 13 verses 6 to 7. Sabi niya, this is why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you, own, if you owe taxes, then pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, and then honor. So for me, parang it's still the same. Give to Caesar what is due to Caesar and give to God what is due to God. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, 
I think uh, it is also time for us to make our own um, contributions. Na I think there's a blessing in 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 uh, complying with all these regulations and all this uh, payment of taxes thing. Um, if you can actually uh, realize that most of the the establishment or entities that are uh, successful uh, up to up to this very date are those uh, uh, companies that are been have been paying large amount of taxes like Jollibee, McDonald's. I don't think that they are actually. I know it just happened that they have this tax planning activities that most uh, business entrepreneurs should also consider. So uh, I think uh, this will end my presentation for this uh, lecture, and I hope that you were able to learn something from this. Uh, thank you very much. God bless. <laughs>